This is the second video in our series of how to perform a lumbar puncture. We will be demonstrating how ultrasound can be used to assist with this procedure. The first video in our series covers all the basics in terms of indications, contraindications and anatomy. We also demonstrated how to use an atraumatic needle using a landmark technique. A palpation-based technique is not always successful in those with a raised body mass index or BMI. This can lead to multiple failed attempts and a delay in obtaining results which can lead to both pain and anxiety. Commonly a fluoroscopic guided or x-ray guided lumbar puncture is requested from a radiology department. A recent review by Sunny et al. shows that evidence from randomised trials that ultrasound improves lumbar puncture success rates whilst reducing the number of attempts and the number of traumatic taps. This paper recommends routine use of ultrasound guidance for patients in whom a risk of a failed procedure is high due to poorly palpable landmarks or atypical spinal anatomy such as scoliosis. Williams et al. give a good summary on how ultrasound can be used to help identify the anatomy as well as the depth to the dura. We will show you this relatively easy technique which avoids radiation as well as often being quicker than referring on to another hospital specialty. A portable ultrasound machine is required. At this institution, the neurology department has recently acquired one that is kept in a stockroom in the neurology offices on level 7. In other hospitals, a machine can usually be loaned from another department such as intensive care or the medical admissions unit. We recommend using a curvilinear probe and abdominal scanning pre-settings if these are available. Adjust the ultrasound settings to acquire an image. Depth field and contrast can be adjusted if uh, necessary. Patient positioning is the same as for the landmark technique. Place a tegaderm on the ultrasound probe and apply plenty of gel. The probe is used with the mark uppermost. This corresponds to the mark on the screen. Place the probe on the skin in the sagittal plane parallel to the presumed midline in the lumbar region. Move up and down until the spinous processes are seen. This will give the midline in the sagittal axis. To find L3-4 interspace, start by moving the probe caudal until a horizontal line appears. This is the sacrum. Then move the probe towards the head, counting the spinous processes, which are the black vertical lines, until the midpoint of the probe is level with the L3-4 intervertebral space. Align the probe with the L3-4 spinous processes. The spinal canal can be seen between the anterior and posterior complexes deep to these. Next, rotate the transducer by 90 degrees and check in the transverse plane. Align the probe looking through the interspinous ligament. The spinal canal can be seen deep to and between the articular processes. Here the depth of the duromater can be measured. Once the landmarks have been marked, the lumbar puncture can proceed as normal. Proceed to cleaning the skin, inject local anaesthetic into the skin and insert the spinal needle. In this patient, the video is known to have raised intracranial pressure secondary to idiopathic intracranial hypertension and was attending for a therapeutic drain. For this reason, a larger gauge, ne gauge needle was selected. Measure the opening pressure and collect the samples as usual. In summary, ultrasound-assisted lumbar puncture is recommended in patients at risk of a failed procedure and those with poorly palpable landmarks. We have shown that this is a relatively easy skill to acquire in order to reduce the number of attempts needed, as well as reducing the radiation exposure to such patients. 